Okay, it's a lovely sunny day and today should actually be a cold, wet and damp day because this is the New Year's Day meet at Brooklands which was postponed earlier this year and uh, moved to Easter so it has now become the Easter gathering and we have such a wide range of classic, vintage and modern classics just take a look around and it's a brilliant day Right, we've got up to the top of the finishing straight now and there's still hundreds of cars here. And uh, we're going to move over to this lovely looking Volkswagen Beetle. They're still actually polishing it here. And uh, we're going to have a chat with the owner who's named Reese, who's talking to someone else at the moment. <laughs> Hi, Reese. Hiya. This is your Beetle? Yes, yeah, a 1955, this one. 1955 Beetle. Uh, you haven't owned it since then. Uh, no, I've owned it seven and a half years. Right. Yeah, I was very lucky to get it. Quite a while. What sort of condition was it in when you bought it? Uh, it's pretty much as it is now. It's had a new engine put into it, and uh, I've changed like a few little bits of stuff, but nothing major. I was trying to keep it as original as possible, so there's a few bits I want to do to it, but yeah, yeah nothing too major. So you've not modified this in any way? You're trying to keep it original looking? Yeah, I mean, the only problem is it shouldn't have the big indicators or the big rear lights, but I'm changing that back right. this year. So, so uh, we've got the big indicators on the top there yeah they're wrong are they yeah it shouldn't have and any the indicators ones at the back then? and it shouldn't have those uh, rear lights there it should have tiny oh, these? wheels yeah right but so I started someone driving. at some stage has put these on yeah i think it was done in the 90s because i imported this car from denmark and it's quite a popular thing to do then all right so it's left hand drive it yeah. is left hand drive yeah yeah I prefer left-hand drive, to be honest. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's quite nice to drive, left-hand drive. <laughs> so this has got the pop-up indicators on the side. Yeah, and they do work as well, yeah. So from 1955, they, they would have been the only indicators on it? Yeah, yeah, it should only have them on it. Right, and it would have had small brake yeah, lights at the back. Rear lights, yeah. I am putting it back to original, but uh, that was just a lot safer, especially when I was 17 and 18 driving it. Yeah, just I think so. Just a new driver of an old yeah, car. Yeah, we don't want these coming out. Do no. <laughs> probably much uh, better yeah give but, something else to yeah to i mean so interior wise is that pretty original uh yeah it's totally original in the interior some of the uh oh, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. try and open the door some of the uh paint Hello, is it's going around the other side as well so but, the yeah. paint working inside is yeah some of it across the yeah across the dash is original but yeah um, what about the upholstery is that pretty much yeah all of the uh except for the the side carpets everything's original right. in there yeah It's nice to see them kept in an original state, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I like to keep it original because you see so many, I mean, especially in my age group, you see so many people that modify them that it's nice to see one that's original. Yeah, that's right. Plus, I can go over speed bumps as well. <laughs> okay, and got an original engine in the back, presumably. Uh, well, it's a few years newer. Oh, is it? So, so it's not an original engine? <coughs> no, but it's decorated to look like the original engine. So right. it's got the uh, bigger dynamo and it's got the curved fan shroud. Okay. But the bottom half's... Uh, so the bottom more. half down here is, is a more modern engine? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still late 50s, but it All should... All right, well, yeah, yeah not that modern then. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why that was done in the late 50s then, it was fairly new back then. Well, no, this engine I had put in a couple of years ago because the other oh, one uh, right, okay. just completely died. Yeah. So I'm rebuilding the original engine at the moment. Right. But during lockdown, I uh, I did a load of like sort of renovation work to it, like painting and stuff underneath, just to keep it a bit better. And I uh, made the engine look original as possible. Right. Yeah. It does look nice. It's a very nice colour as well. Was that an original colour? Yeah. Or that's that, uh, that Strato silver. That's cool. Strato silver. Right. <coughs> looks a bit greeny to me. Yeah. It looks. <laughs> everyone says it's a different colour. Yeah. Uh, some people say it's blue. I used to think. And yeah, blue, silver, yeah. and uh, green is the most common colours I yeah. get told. It certainly looks unusual. Great. So you enjoy driving it, and you're going to keep oh, it yeah, for a it. long time, I guess. Yeah, I'm never going to sell it. Never? <laughs> no, never. No? Right, right. OK. Great. <laughs> Thanks very much, then, Rhys. Thank you. Right. We're still on the members' bank in, and we're just actually above the members' tunnel here, which used to go up to the members' hill up the top, where people could watch the racing with a fantastic view from up there. But down here on the banking, we have uh, an unusual vehicle, a Trabant, and uh, we have the owner of this car with us as well, David. Hello there. Hello. Hiya. 
a Trabant. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, the story started a few years ago. Um, I went to Berlin on a holiday with my son and my nephew, and we did the Trabi driving tour around Berlin in a fleet of Trabants, and um, we enjoyed ourselves so much. When we got home, my nephew said to me, can we get one, can we get one? So without him knowing, I found one on eBay, had it trailered down, left it in the garage and said, oh, I, th I think the garage door's not working properly. C can you go and just check it for me? And up went the garage door and there was the Trabant and uh, it's been part of the family ever since. Wow, that, that's an amazing story, isn't it? Uh, how old was your nephew at that time? Oh, he was only uh, about eight or nine, so not, not old enough to drive. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, he, he's now just passed his test, so I'm sure he wants to get hold of the keys. And so take tell me speed. about this Trabi tour. Is this an um, organised event? You, yeah, you hired it's, it's, Trabants, or how does that work? It's, it's very, very interesting because it, it's based at Checkpoint Charlie, which is very significant in Berlin. And they must have about 100 Trabants at this place. Right. And they are fitted with um, walkie-talkies inside. And um, the tour guide is at the front. And he gives you the, the, the spiel as you go around. And you go around like a snake all around Berlin, stopping at various waypoints. Right. Um, and it's just the most authentic way to see Berlin. Yeah, it's certainly a different way of doing it, isn't it? Yeah. And um, you had the eight-year-old nephew with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was his name? Matthew. He's just, Matthew. He's just arrived here. And surprisingly, he's, he's, <laughs> he's just turned up. He's no longer eight years old. Hello there. Hello. Hiya. How old are you now? I'm well, 17, I think. You think? Yeah, last time I checked, yeah, I don't remember these things, do I? You're not sure? No. <laughs> what do you think, Trabant? That's a bit of a surprise to see it in the garage, I should think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Major surprise, yeah. I think it's not been out for a couple of years now, though, so... It's nice right. to see it out and about, you know, it's always COVID, isn't it? You so, know, but... Yeah, you're hoping to use it a bit, are you? Hopefully so, yeah. When yeah, the weather's right. all nice now, you know. Have you passed your driving test? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That helps. It does help, yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about the car. I don't know a lot about Trabants. What sort of uh, engine have these got? This one is a uh, 600, 600cc, two-cylinder. Um... And allegedly, they had 26 horsepower when they were new. 26, um, wow. Which is, you know, questionable. I think there are some lawnmowers with more power than that. Yeah. It's a yeah, two-stroke, right. so you have to mix the... This is the petrol tank here on top of the engine. Okay. Yeah, doesn't, safe, that, that's a good safe, safe position. Yeah, it's good, yeah. <laughs> There's no pumps. It's all gravity-fed, um, so... And the... So you, you put your petrol in, and then you put your two-stroke oil in. There are some fairly clever engineering solutions. There's transverse leaf springs, so very simple suspension. Okay, um, yeah, I'm just see those there. The yeah. engine rather famously only has five moving parts. Um, the air intake here has got summer and winter mode. So this is in summer mode at the moment. Winter mode, you rotate the funnel round and the intake air is drawn off of the exhaust manifold. So oh, right. to okay. stop the carb from icing up. Um, and yes, yeah, just very, very simple engineering. The body is Duraplast, which uh, is a bit like fiberglass and doesn't rot but there is a steel um, chassis underneath. Um, this particular car was built in 1974. Um, they didn't change much. Matthew, when were they built from? They were built from... Well, the, the, the design of Japan started in the mid-50s yeah. and all went up until the fall of the ball. Um, so this design, it's interesting. Uh, people say the Mini and all that was the first car to have the engine there and the gearbox there front-wheel drive. Yeah. No, it was Japan. It was one of these. In 59, engine there, gearbox there, like a Mini. Right. Yeah, similar sort of setup. Before I had kids to go in this, and the mini. And this particular car was then registered in the UK in 1977, which kind of tells me that it was um, a, a service person brought it back from from, from Germany. Right. Yeah. Um, after they were would were returned, um, we've bought it to a few meets at Brooklyn's over the years, and quite often you'll get someone come up and say, "Oh my God, a Trabant! I was in the army in 19 whatever, and I had one in in Germany." In Germany. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they have quite a. A, a fondness. Uh, they made quite a lot of these, didn't they, I think? Three million, I believe. <laughs> Three million. Another interesting story. I've, I've got a friend who is an East Berliner, and I've actually just been to Berlin to see her. And I remember a few years ago talking to her father um, about life before the wall came down. And he ordered a brand new one of these back in the day. And he waited 14 years. No. 14 years. 14 years. Good as um, me. And this was as good as it got. <laughs> That is amazing. Is it? Should, we, should we have a quick look inside? Um, which way should we go? We'll go around this side. Oh, 
Okay, so what have we got in here? Are these the sort of seats would have had originally? Yes, yeah, so these have got new covers on, but it would have been like this. Dashboard is very, very simple. It's got a column um, gear change, a bit like a 2CV. Right. Um, and it's got a, a freewheel in, in fourth gear. Um, but with it being a two-stroke, you do need to try and keep it under power at all times so it circulates the oil right. around the engine. Yeah. Um, but very, very simple. I do find it hard to believe that the a family of four Germans could fit in here with their luggage. And it would but, still go. And it would still go, <laughs> but, but it did. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's very, very simple and, yeah. and quite charming. Just under the dashboard there is the, the fuel stop cock. Like a motorbike, you've got to turn the fuel on before you oh, start. Oh, right, OK, that yeah, lever. that's that little lever there, is it? And yeah. then when it starts spluttering, you turn it on to reserve because there's no fuel gauge. Uh, we didn't show you the fuel dipstick, but there is a calibrated ah, so, so. dipstick that you okay. put in the top of the tank. Wow. Um, and that's how so, you tell where you feel. Yeah. Like, like a really old car. Basically. Obviously, they don't have fuel gauges. Yeah. Very, very Vintage simple. cars. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And uh, you've got a bit of luggage space in there, so you there's could put a suitcase or two in. Yeah, there's... We yeah. put them chairs in today, you know. Yeah. A surprising amount of space in the boot. Oh, yeah, that's a fair um, bit in there, isn't there? Yeah. So to get your chairs and your table and things in there. This is fairly essential. <laughs> <laughs> As is AA membership. Um... This car's got a tow bar, and, and you do see Trabants in Germany towing trailers, um, boat trailers or, or utility trailers, um, and obviously the Nürburgring sticker just to finish it off. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I can just see this speeding around the Nürburgring. <laughs> It'd be good, good fun, I would imagine. Yeah. So we're looking for many more years of motoring in this with the, the both of you? I yeah, so. I hope so, yeah. Hope yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a real, um, uh, in Germany particularly, a uh, good supply of spare parts and restoration right. and stuff. Yeah, well, there's still about 100,000 on the road in Germany. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. So, yeah. Which was surprised me when I found out, you know. Yeah, 100,000 is quite yeah. a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, got to be a good spares market for that then still. Yeah. yeah. And it's such a simple engine, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. You can literally take it out. You can lift it out like a suitcase and put another one in. Yeah. Um, yeah. People do often carry spare engines if they break down at the roadside. <laughs> It's so simple to change. Put mine out from the boot, put it in, yeah. and away you go. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you both for yeah. showing us around the car. Yeah. It's been you. a pleasure. Yeah. And I hope you enjoy your day at Brooklyn's. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Cheers.